Welcome to the Lockdown Economy, a social nonprofit initiative by the Alter Contacts Think Tank. And the job of the Alter Contacts Think Tank and Lockdown Economy is to help small business owners and entrepreneurs get through the challenges of the pandemic and reactivate the economy. I'm Mike Tierney, and today we're visiting Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we're speaking with Adija Greer Smith. She's the founder and owner of Confectionately Yours a bakery and dessert business based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Adija, thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely, thanks for having me, Mike. First thing I wanted to ask is just, just what does your business do? So my confectionately yours is a, a retail hometown bakery right here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, we specialize in love first people and dessert. So we marry those three um, components together to create um, just magic for people. Um, it's a place where kids can come and grab their favorite cookie. It's a place where um, the older generation can come and get those old time desserts that they were used to having in their time. Um, and it's a place for, for your, your everyday person who just is craving something sweet from the bride and groom who wants the cake. To, again, just your everyday person who's looking for a nice a nice snack with a cup of coffee. Um, it's a place for everybody. So um, we we definitely um, have had an opportunity to grow since we we opened our doors, and so we are now also uh, meeting the. Wholesalers, um, with the. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit more about? Um, the Sherman Phoenix, and what I really like about it when I read is the um, sort of community sharing where you are able to share certain parts of your business with other businesses that you partner with to bring down your own expenses. So for example, you're sharing dining tables. It's a community where you don't have to worry about creating your own, um, you don't have to have your own bathroom because it's a community bathroom that, that the whole group uses. Um, the tables and all that. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came about and and that whole concept of the community sharing? Um, so there's a whole bunch of different businesses at this location and you're working together with each other. Absolutely. And it's about women um, who, um, it was established as as a opportunity to um, bring small businesses together collaboratively under one cohesive um, facility, but also just bringing um, um, a place for the inner city of Milwaukee, a place they could really home. Um, after certain ball shooting, um, the inner city of Milwaukee was a very damaged um, and hurt um, and so what those co-developers those riots and that we could truly rise from the ashes that is the the story of the phoenix you know there was a lot of rioting there were um was a lot of um looting um businesses were burned and this facility um was a very solid structural facility that had been in our community for over 100 years. And so what those developers decided to do was try to create a place of unity um, by showing people coming together from different walks of life, from different business um, interests to come together and show growth, development, and solidarity together under one unit. Um, and again, overall, just really, again, just showing that togetherness. So that's how the Sherman Phoenix was originally born. Um, so we have about 29 minority-owned businesses under one roof where, um, again, you have Confectionally Yours Bakery. There are several different eateries from, you know, Funky Fresh Spring Rolls, Sauce and Spice Pizza, and Lush Popcorn. Um, we have uh, um, Kuka Jackalaya um, Collaborative Cohort, which is a community of different 
um, crafters and people who specialize in health and wellness and herbs and different things like that. We have barber and beauty salons. We have yoga studios, massage therapy. Um, we have nail salons. We have so many different um, businesses under one roof. And the togetherness brings, um, um, it shows that, exudes that unity that we that we offer. Um, it gives us an opportunity to work together because many of us um, were first-time business owners and very new to the entrepreneurship realm. And so coming into this project together um, definitely gave us an opportunity to grow together, learn together, help each other during the process. And that, that togetherness, um, utilizing this space, we've had opportunities to collaborate and help each other grow. So, you know, myself along with um, um, other businesses, we've done things together um, where we partner um, food and dessert, or, you know, you have some businesses that partner um, health and wellness with, um, you know, with the yoga studio, with the therapist, you know, different things of that nature. So it gives us a, a really good opportunity to really be creative um, and to bounce off one another. And so that's really one of the, um, one of the gems, the hidden gems in the Sherman Phoenix as a whole that I think really makes us different from from other places. And so it sounds like this collaboration and teamwork um, has become really helpful in, in the time of the pandemic where everybody's been throwing a curveball and uh, the whole idea of, 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 of have running a successful business, has the dynamic has to change with the restrictions and, and the lockdown restrictions. So tell us about a couple of the things that you've had to on the fly change um, you know, rethink, um, and so that you could still um, stay in business and um, be there for your customers and operate it successfully. Well, you know, when when COVID hit the world um, like a storm, no one was prepared, no one seen it coming, um, and we immediately were closed down for business. We were not able to have people in the building for safety reasons. Um, our staff had to um be away from from the facility as well so um, again like everybody else in the world we were all really kind of caught blindly with this thing right so um we had to quickly adjust to the new norm what we see now um but when this all started we had no idea what adjustments to make um so after just a quick short few weeks um into the pandemic um, I really had to really think about strategizing how I was able to safely meet the needs of my customers um, and also remain relevant because the truth is is that a lot of people were being laid off of their jobs um, or just let go completely and finances were not what they were used to them being. So the priority to support small business was not necessarily there, which I could completely understand. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we had to really give it a little bit of, of time and we had to be really patient with our customers. And so that afforded me personally the opportunity to really kind of sit back and think, well, what could I personally do um, to help my community um, and not really worry about the business right now? Um, because I knew I needed to really be patient on that end. And so what I personally decided to do um, because again, I was used to running a business. I had an influx of inventory. I decided that I needed to do something to put a smile on the faces of people if I had the ability to do so. And so um, I, I rallied my team. I knew we couldn't have customers in, but that did not mean we could not go out. So we had stocked up and we began to bake up. We, you know, I decided what can I bake in large quantity um, with the inventory that I have, and I can reach the most people with a little bit. And so um, I took all the inventory up and I started baking up cookies and um, baking cookies and hundreds of cookies. And I started going around to different hospitals. You know, I started seeing how the doctors and the nurses and the medical staff were being affected by this thing. And people were dying every second. Um, nurses and doctors were working 16, 18, 20 hour shifts, not getting breaks. They were, you know, in full um, hazmat gear, um, they were emotionally drained, they were physically drained, they were mentally exhausted. And I said, well, what can I do to 
help them in any way, shape, or form. And I'm a firm believer in my grandparents and my mother has always taught me that the smallest things can make the biggest impact. Right. And so I said, what is that small thing that I can do that can make it, that can make a big impact? And I said, you know what, something as small as the sweetest thing I know and that I love can make a big impact, and that was cookies. Mm-hmm. And so I started baking, Mike, and I started baking, and I started baking, and my team said, we'll help you. Um, we, You know, I, I couldn't afford to pay them. They said, we don't care. We want to help the people. And so they came in, and we hours, and we packaged cookies, and – um, I started to reach out to, you know, my supporters. I said, you know, I know you guys can't come to the bakery and support the bakery this way because it's not, not safe, but can you support the bakery by buying, buying a cookie for a doctor? And if you buy one, I'll match the other one with my own resource. And that's what we did. We started baking cookies. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars cook, uh, fifteen thousand cookies later, we have touched hospitals throughout our entire city surrounding cities. I was personally putting them in my own vehicle. I was driving around. I was meeting medical staff at the front door and saying, here, I know this is just a little bit, but give it to whatever unit you think could use it right now. And I'll be back with more as as soon as I can bake more. So I would take four or 500 cookies at a time. We would write notes on the boxes and say, we're praying for you. We're thinking about you. Stay strong. Be safe. You're doing a great job. And, you know, I realized that that little small thing made a really big impact. Yeah. Because we started getting letters. And in 10 hours, I didn't have any sleep. I didn't take a lunch. And I walked in the break room and I saw a huge box of cookies with words of inspiration. And it gave me hope. Mm-hmm. Well, that leads me to my next and question. I can't help but get emotional. Like, because... Oh, I get emotional giving people hope. Yeah. Well, that brings me to my next question I was going to ask you. What what are your next steps as you move into a new year, as we hope that we're getting towards some sort of finish line in some number of months? Um, what are your next steps? Because I understand that something big happened for you at the beginning of this month in January, and it might have been all the goodwill that you built. Uh, where it was coming back around from a karma way, um, where you were able to open up a new, yeah, a new store. Yes. So you know, in the midst of it, you know, so much has happened. Um, so many, you know, I, I counted a true blessing because so many people um, in business have um, not been able to sustain during this time. And um, for for whatever reason it may be, some people may be just, they just said, you know, I gave this business my life and in a split second it was gone and I don't know how to re- rebound. Um, well, I, I just, I believe that I, I come from a family of resilience um, and I just didn't believe it in my heart that God brought me this far to say this was it Mm -hmm. and so again um i didn't worry about the business i kept doing what i felt was necessary for the people and um now i'm in the position um confectionally yours is, is still thriving we're still moving um and we are still serving our customers and now um because of i believe truly believe that because of the favor that God has over me and over my life, um, we've had an opportunity to expand in another app and open up um, another location, things of that nature. We've been um, working with with World Central Kitchen even during the pandemic, which has been a a great blessing. I'm proud about is that during this time, you know, Chef Jose Andres has been working throughout the entire globe to feed people. And this movement is something extremely um, important to him, important enough for to work um, with the program to feed people. And it says it's helped us 
financially, but it's also helped us to touch people. Mm-hmm. And that platform, and we'll be opening that business up in the very near future. My partner and I are extremely excited about that. I mean, I just who opens up a, a, a whole business in the midst of a pandemic? But um, I just believe that the favor that that God has over me is, is absolutely fair um and we've been appointed and we're gonna we gonna keep running you know mm-hmm. I, I believe that you know we were we were on a we were on a fast pace when we opened up um but we had to slow down but we didn't stop and and, and I believe that's the difference you know sometimes you can be running sometimes you can be walking sometimes you gotta crawl but you just gotta keep moving you just just can't stop and we're not stopping yeah and also you re you re you changed how you were moving because the circumstances changed and you still went forward so that is that's such an inspiring story um yes Mm -hmm. so my last question is i just want to make sure that uh i didn't forget to ask you something that you might want to share um we've got other business owners and entrepreneurs that are tuned in and i want to make sure Is there anything I I forgot that you want to make sure to get out there as a final thought? You you know, Mike, I would probably say, um, you know, really just um, evaluate um, what it is your heart desires first. Um, Has your passion and your purpose met? Um, Because if it has, you know, when you do things um, out of passion and out of purpose, the profit of those things will come to you. But when you reverse those things, you know, it can be a, a, a hard challenge for you. Um, I don't go in any endeavor or anything with a, a profit in mind. It's about the purpose for me. Um, and it, it has to meet my passion. You know, I have to be passionate about things. I have to be purposeful um, and very intentional about what the goal is you know we want to touch people we want to help people and you know we want to employ people you know people have lost their jobs they've lost homes you know people's livelihoods have been gravely affected during this time how can we help people rebuild how can we build people up um and so with those things in mind you know having a good heart and and doing things with the right intention is extremely important um i i encourage people to to definitely all your businesses um you know all those different things and and you really you have to sometimes you have to pivot sometimes you have to just strategize um and you have to move according to the need and what's going on you know it's, it's something we we definitely had to do but our passion and purpose never change you might have to make some adjustments but, um, you know, you just got to keep moving. Just don't stop. And, you know, as long as you're moving, you're making, that would be one of the things I would just, you know, encourage, you know, business owners, just small business owners to to really pay attention to and, and, and make sure that they're exercising, especially during this time. It's hard for everybody. It's hard for us all. But I think that, um just in life general, and especially with everything that our nation is experiencing, if we just come together with the things that we share in common of what we we would move better. Right. Well, Adija Greer Smith, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me, Mike. Okay, that's Adija Greer Smith. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, owner, founder of Confectionately Yours. And again, thanks to everyone else also tuning in. Um, We appreciate you and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and also forward it on to other folks in your network uh, that they could also find this useful. We've got a ton of insights on our channel from business owners. We've got best practice stories from business owners all across the globe, from small towns to big cities and all communities in between. And uh, I'm Mike Tierney, and um, I'm going to say goodbye until next time, and stay tuned.